Good morning. It, it's 7 o'clock and I am waiting for my J1 bus to come around the corner to pick me up. Silver Spring resident Jacob Barker doesn't necessarily consider himself a morning person by nature, but his lifestyle has forced him to become one. Jacob, a music teacher at Woodland Elementary, catches the 7 a.m. bus from downtown Silver Spring to get to work in Bethesda. And now I'm getting ready for my about 40 minute ride. He decided several years ago that he would let go of his car and rely on public transportation to get around. The whole reason I do this is because this isn't about um, convenience for me, this is about what is good. And they were like, what is the one thing someone can actually do to have an impact on the climate? And there's like, there's almost nothing you can do. About the biggest impact that any single person can make is to just choose not to drive a car. Uh, now I am walking down Grosvenor Lane. And so just taking a car off the road is about the biggest personal decision that you can make. It's a little before eight o'clock and I'm just walking through the hallways of our building. He takes us through his daily commutes as a music teacher and church soloist. For the beauty of the earth. I would say I'm from a musical family. Not that they're all musicians per se, but that they're all very musical people. He gets to his classroom very early. Boop, boop, and boop. To develop an exciting learning plan for his students. Triple Tita. I knew I wanted to be a teacher. Didn't know I wanted to be a music teacher. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we're learning basics of music. Cover the top three holes. And we're covering these holes up. And we'll use any instrument that's accessible for them mm -hmm. to teach any concept. That's good. It's 4.55 in the afternoon. Headed to the Grosvenor Strathmore Station. And Jacob is en route to his next adventure. We caught him on one of his most busy days. Uh, heading down to Tenley Town. He takes the train down to DC twice a week. I just got off my train. Where he works as a soloist. Feed me till I want no more at the National United Methodist Church. Okay, it's very exciting to get paid to make music. Not everybody is fortunate to get to do that, um, even though that is the experience we all should have. Yay As he walks to catch the Metro, he tells us about an accident he was involved in on Old Georgetown Road that left him hospitalized. All of a sudden, a car that was stopped started and hit me. Um, and then I blacked out. So I'm thankful I don't remember it because when I walk by that intersection, I still have to walk by it twice a day, most days. I literally got hit and hospitalized and had to take a month and a half off of work um, because of the conditions of that road. Because we use a road resurfacing project. A few months after Jacob's accident, Council Vice President Andrew Friedson, along with other local leaders and community members, held a pedestrian safety walk to show the dangers of traffic patterns on Old Georgetown Road. Well, there is a roadmap that the State Highway Administration has come out with that highlights a number of safety changes that can be made at intersections, creating a delay for uh, pedestrians to be able to safely cross. Uh, we had a painted bike lane uh, installed, but we knew we wanted a protected uh, bike lane. Now that stretch of roadway is protected with pylons to separate bicyclists and cyclists. Uh, we got to bring the speed of cars down uh, in order to make sure that when there is an error, when there is a collision, when somebody does make a mistake, that that mistake doesn't end in a death. Very thankful for the bike lanes. They make it a lot safer. Be thankful for all the people who got community involvement with both the State Highway Administration and with um, the County Council and other local jurisdictions to push for bike safety improvements on that highway. Council President Evan Glass also recently introduced the Safe Streets Act. Our goal is to have zero pedestrian 
and cyclist deaths on our roadways by the year 2030. Which is the largest pedestrian safety package since Vision Zero. These bold steps towards making our streets safer in the county <laughs> give people like Jacob a peace of mind and make commutes more enjoyable. I think that not having the convenience of a car um, makes me be out in the community more than I would otherwise be. I, I see things I don't notice that you don't notice when you're driving. You're busy. You're busy driving. You know what I mean? I really like walking down, uh, walking from the bus to here, <laughs> because this road has these beautiful flowering trees that I get to see every morning that I think most people don't notice because they're in their cars going too fast to really see them. Do do re do. After a long day of teaching and rehearsal. God will take care of you. Jacob commutes back to downtown Silver Spring. It's about 9.40. I chose to live um, in a very walkable, dense neighborhood. And it just means that you can find what you need within a very short amount of time if you're walking, um, or maybe even if you're biking. Um, it's about having the amenities that you need in close proximity to where the people are living. I get to look at these beautiful trees again. Look at those. Look at those. They're all over the place. You don't see that as much when you're in a car. Everything is a lot more connected than you think it is here. Um, even if not literally everything you want is right where you're at. From Silver Spring, I'm Mershai Sahalu.